peace for Ukraine or Ukraine now. Russia, just go home. Starry, starry night. Paint your palette blue and gray. Look out on the summer's day with eyes that know the darkness in my soul. If you don't have any money to store a lot of food and fancy things, you just buy like brown rice and sesame already roasted or even maybe raw and then you roast it yourself if you can. If not, just buy roasted sesame and eat it with brown rice and salt. So store some of these. It will last a long time. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. But the brown rice doesn't last as long as white rice. Oh. So you buy both. So you eat first the brown rice and then the white rice you eat later. Understand. Okay, Master. Keep sesame and peanuts. Those things have a lot, a lot of protein. Even if you cannot cook anything, you can eat them with rice. Understand. Yes, understand. And then you have enough nutrition to survive. Yes. Yes, Master. I have done that for three months at least. When I did not have any so-called disciples, I went on retreat, like every monk should do every year, four months, all the rainy season. And I ate only brown rice and sesame with some salt. And at that time, I could afford a bottle of soy sauce, and I added a little bit for taste. Otherwise, it brown rice, sesame, and salt is good enough already. I understand, sir. I know one monk in Taipei before, I used to live in his temple. He ate only that and water, nothing else. But he's very, very strong because he exercises, he practices qigong. Yes. And he taught his disciples and he proved that if you put a knife on his throat, it won't go through. Wow. Oh. If you stab it in the back or so with, uh, you know, broken glass or knife or something, it won't go through. Oh. Oh. And he ate only sesame and brown rice as long as I was there. And he, he ate that for many years before and even after I left, I believe. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so you will survive. And he's very big, strong. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Not skinny like me, huh? No, he was big and strong. He advised me to eat more, to do something to make myself big like him. <laughs> He told me it's like a mountain. I said, but I'm too small, you know, how can I be a mountain? He said, be a small mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, I guess I'm also a small mountain now, shouldering a lot of things. Yeah? Yes, yes, yes master. Master. <laughs> Look on the internet to learn from other people how they grow their vegetables in the house, inside any room, with even buckets or even plastic bags or any discarded uh, bags, you know, anything they grow in, how they grow them and how they harvest and use them. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. I'll grow it on the balcony, grow it in even your big bathroom. I did grow soya sprouts in my bathtub before. Oh, wow. Yes. Long, long, long decades ago, we didn't have any money and mm. we planted some vegetables outside and I grow soya sprouts in the bathtub and they grow well. Oh. We could sell them and make some money to survive at that time. Uh, because I never want to take any donations. I, I did not even when I had nothing to live on. We always could think of something for what to do to survive without having to take donations. Understand, Master. So all this I tell you is from my own experience also. You can grow anything inside the house and put them next to the window sill or on the window sill or next to the window or spare one room. Or also put them in your living room just as a plant, you know, just as a decorative plant as well. Yes, yes, yes master. master. Plant them as any other plants. You can plant your vegetables as decorative plants so that you are ready in case of an emergency. I understand, Master. If there's nothing else you can buy or it's not possible, to have any money or nobody would accept any money. Just keep growing them. Even if there is no emergency, you still can eat them. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Every day you need them. Anyway, you, you have to go to the supermarket to buy them. And nowadays, food keeps getting less and less available. 
and more and more expensive, so you can grow them easily, very easily. All the plant needs is just soy, any soy, you know, from the garden or you buy from the shop and mix with some soy in your garden or some some sand. And if you have a garden and have trees, then you can use the leaves to compost. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes. And anything like when you mow the grass, you just put it in the compost together with the leaves and put some soy and some more things and it will be fantastic already. Yes, yes. I don't have all that luxury. I did not have. So at that time when I planted, I just put tea leaves, you know, the, oh. the tea bags that you put in your cup to make tea and the bag is still there. Yes, yes, yes. 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 You take it out and then put it on your plant. Yes. Uh -huh. mm. They grow like crazy. Whatever I did, look. <laughs> One time, uh, I live in New York in a temple, and the plant, I think I told you that already, but I'm not sure. The plant was so small, like maybe 10 inches tall, yellow, and very miserable. They put it on the window. I think nobody gave them water or anything. The temple people make tea and the leftovers from the bags. I just give him some and give water, or he grew so big that I had to get out of my room <laughs> in order to let the plant grow. <laughs> it grew in the whole room. Wow. wow. And then later I didn't know what to do, so I had to cut it into small, small plants and let them um, sprout, I mean grow, and then I put them outside in a plastic bag or plastic uh, container, whatever I could use, so I put them outside on the street and people they passed by and took them. Oh, wow. <laughs> Otherwise, it was not possible. It kept growing the whole temple. <laughs> <laughs> and all I had was just some normal garden herbs and the tea. Left over, the tea bags. Well, that's it. And of course, if you don't drink it, or you still have some tea left. Like in that temple, sometimes they didn't finish all the tea. So I diluted it with more water, and then I water the plant with it. Oh, it go like crazy. <laughs> Everybody was surprised. Wow. I had a witness, not like I'm telling you the story. Uh, I used to live in that temple uh, from Master Sheng Yen. Yes. And he told his disciples in Taiwan that that's how the plant grew all over like that. He <laughs> knew it. And he even told uh, his disciples, uh, his followers in Taiwan when he came back to his temple from America. And then uh, one of uh, your brothers, his name I forgot. And he told me that he's one of the descendants of Confucius. Yeah, oh, yes, sir. I remember that. So he also went there to listen to Master Sheng Yang, and he told me that story because I wasn't there listening to him. But he told me when he saw me in Taiwan again, he told me, oh, that's what Master Sheng Yang said, say that you have magic power or something <laughs> from a little tiny one to growing all over the room, in two, three rooms in the temple. And if I didn't keep cutting it, it would have taken over the whole temple, you know? Ah. So truly, we don't need a lot in life. If you don't have anything to eat, make sure you have brown rice, sesame, and salt, and you will survive. Yes, Master. Yes. And water. Thank you, Master. And make sure you keep some of the water filters so that in case the water becomes contaminated or dirty, you can filter the water and cook it or drink it straight without cooking. It depends. Yes, must understand, must understand. But I always cook the water even if it's filtered. I I feel I'm safer that way. I feel better. Mm. You should buy canned food. So no need to cook in the event that we don't have even electricity or gas or any means of cooking. Have to prepare for all scenarios. You have to even train your pet people to do their business inside, somewhere in the bathroom or on some piece of uh, maybe artificial grass or, or anything that they will do their poo pee pee inside. On. Because in the case of a nuclear or atomic explosion, the pet people cannot go outside because they will bring the toxic radiation into the house when they come back in, and that will be bad for all of you including the pet people. There are so many things we have to do uh, if we want to survive. In any case, it's some demonic evil war between humans.
We don't just have to deal with human war mongers. We have to even deal now with the demonic force which is compelled to come and kill and destroy and wipe out humanity. Some of the top demons that I have banned to hell, they are allowed to come back now. Oh. 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 I don't know how to win this situation because we must have human cooperation as well to be stronger in order to defeat all these negative forces. They are everywhere now. They are seducing humans, they are contaminating humans, and they are poisoning humans' brains, minds, and bodies. That's why you can see all kind of disasters coming almost together. But it will get worse even. They will come more together at the same time. All kind of disasters, diseases, and all that. It's just beginning only. Wow. And in order to win this karmic war, we need also humans' cooperation so that heaven and earth are united. Understand. Understand. Yes, Master. Master. Then we'll be stronger to be able to make peace, to create harmony and safety for all humans and all other non-human people on this planet. I feel very, very frustrated and very lonely, even with the help of heavens. Anyone would feel lonely without the cooperation of the Earth's inhabitants. I hope I hope everyone understands what I'm saying. Yeah, we hope so. United we stand, because this is about the world, earthlings, and the animal people to live here. The animal people cooperate with us, but humans, not completely, not a lot at the moment. So even though heavens have comforted me and told me, don't lose hope to save your planet, at the moment, honestly, I just don't know how we can win. Oh, please pray whoever can, please. We need all humanity to stand up, to back us in this troubled time. <laughs> I don't know. I cannot cry anymore. Oh, then I say whatever happens, happens. The soul will not die ever. It's just the human souls or animal people souls are still trapped in many layers of so-called bodies. So even if the physical bodies are gone, the astral bodies are still there and will still be punished in hell. Oh, horribly. You cannot imagine the punishment there. Whoever has to go to hell. But, uh, oh God, love. But they don't know it. That is a problem. Oh, they're so blind, so blindfolded that they don't know heavens, they don't know hell, and they just do anything, thinking there's no consequences. And my heart cannot continue to hell this. Oh, you suffer for your sanity. How you try to set them free They would not listen, they did not know how Perhaps they'll listen now